Hi, this is Michael Beckman. Um, I'm going to try to work through a couple of different ways we can brighten and optimize a print for the digital squeegee. This is a graphic that um, I came up with. It's just kind of a stock image, and I put some type around it, and I figured I'd print this on a kind of a dark blue background. But here's the image. I added some type in just in white. And when I look at it, I think it could be a good bit brighter and more vibrant. So that's what we're going to try to do first. So the first thing I want to do is I want to just go to the channel I want to manipulate. And the simplest way, and, and one that Michelle did a video on just a few days ago that was really good, um, is you can saturate. Maybe lighten a little bit to try to get some of the colors brighter. Hopefully everybody can see what we've done there. I'll undo that so we can go back to where we were. And then I'll redo it. And that's one simple way to get some brightness and color. So that's a simple way to do it. Another way to do it, and again, I think this is even simpler, is... Um, I'm going to convert this into a CMYK to go ahead and get it ready to send to the the DS. Um, and one way you can manipulate this either before or after you've done your adjustments is simply by how you convert to a profile. So this is one CMYK conversion that I use a lot. It's Grackle. All the experts in this kind of thing tell me that this has the widest gamut. Um, I used to use this one a lot, the swap version. Um, I don't know if we're seeing a whole lot of difference between the two, but um, I'm going to stick with the one that I use pretty much consistently. Now I have some options here in the rendering, um, the intent. Um, perceptual is going to work good for some flesh tones, some things like that. Um, what's nice about this in Photoshop is I can see my results as I do it. So I can check out different rendering intents. Um, saturation, improve the yellow a little bit. I don't know if you saw that. Let me go back. It just beefed it up just a tiny bit. Um, there's relative color metric. Which again, I think brightens things up usually. I use this one quite a bit. Um, but this is the one I wanted to use for this because you can see how much it brightened up that image. Let me go back and turn off, um, turn off my background so we can see this better. So I go to Edit Profile, Convert to Profile. And again, I look through my options. I've got perceptual, and you can see now, once I remove that background, what it does in here, in this yellow portion in the bottom corner. Um, it's pretty dull. I can tell that I've got some cyan in there, um, some magenta that maybe I don't really need. I can check out relative color metric, which improves it slightly, and then absolute color metric. And you can see, hopefully, what that did. So when I'm happy with that, I can do that. Um, and again, it, it basically did a lot of what I would have done with the uh, hue and saturation. It did it all on its own. Um, so I think this is a nice feature to save me a little bit of time. Um, I can still go back in at this point and further adjust the hue and saturation to optimize it a little more. But now you can say I don't have to go nearly as far with it to get that color. Now look at my reds, my yellow, and my green. They're very strong, very saturated, and very clean. Um, I've removed some of that muddiness that you might get where you've got um, maybe a little too much black or a little too much... Uh, cyan in some of these areas that you don't want it. Um, I can lighten it a little bit. Um, I really don't think I need it on this one so I'm just going to increase the saturation a little bit and I'm going to call that done. Um, 
So that's my CMYK. I'm ready to uh, send this to the DS. Um, I like to convert to CMYK myself um, so that I can see what I've got. So what I'm sending to the, um, the DS is pretty well set. Um, the, the RIP is going to interpret this a little bit, but because I'm sending it as a CMYK, it doesn't have to do much in the way of interpretation. So I'm, I'm pretty secure in, in that this is what I'm going to get. Um, I'm going to show you real quick a case where that might not work so well. This is another stock image. That conversion profile may not work quite as well because I have some white down here where I want to keep some light tones of cyan, maybe magenta, whatever it gives me, I kind of want to keep it. So if I use the convert to profile, I'm going to use Grackle again. If I do absolute color metric, I don't have a whole lot going on in this white area. If I use perceptual for this one, you can see I've picked up a little bit of tones in some of those white areas. So for this one, it may not work quite so well. I might use perceptual. Um, it's kind of up to you, but I wanted to show you a case where maybe it didn't work quite so well. The other thing is if you're somebody who does hundreds of these things and you need to move quick and somebody sent you an RGB and you don't care if you need to manipulate it yourself, um, you can do this in the RIP as well. So here it is in the Caldera RIP. Um, I save this as an RGB without the background. Um, so I load that into my, my RIP and I go here. I'm going to use the RIP to convert it to CMYK rather than bother doing it myself. And you can see I have the same renderings here. I have perceptual, color metric, color metric with a black point conversion, and then saturation and absolute. So if I use absolute, just like I did in Photoshop, it's going to give me similar results. The, the disadvantage here is I don't really see it, but if I'm in a hurry, why not? Um, so that's how I might brighten up it the colors in the RIP if I don't want to convert it to CMYK myself. I might just just do that. Call it done and hit print. So hopefully that shows you a couple of things you can do to brighten up and, and saturate an image without needing to do a lot of manipulation yourself.